There's a quote by Edward Hale that really does inspire me. And it goes, I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And I will not let what I cannot do interfere with what I can do. And I think it not only applies to me, but also to our clients when they get overwhelmed by what's in their life and the obstacles they face. If they can do something, even if it's a small thing, and I can be there to help them. MHS, we're a nonprofit, and we help people with behavioral health challenges, mental illness, or people with addiction challenges. MHS has a wide spectrum of programs, everything from prevention, where we work with communities to pass ordinances on substance abuse laws and regulations. We also have outpatient services where people can come just get some counseling or medication. We also have in-home and in-school work where we actually go into the home and work with the whole family system, keeping that child in the home instead of having to go to a higher level of care. And that makes the whole family stronger and more successful. Mental illness really is the unspoken illness in America. One in four people have a mental illness. It accounts for 15% of our total health care costs for all diseases. And then when you realize that impacts our economy over $80 billion, that's huge. That's over 57 million people just in America have a mental illness, from children to seniors. The lady that you're seeing today is not the lady that I was about 13 and a half years ago. I'm diagnosed dual diagnosis. I'm bipolar and I have addiction problems. Many people don't really understand or think about how mental illness impacts children. But one in five children and adolescents does have a mental illness. And of those, only one out of five will actually get treatment. And we're talking about a mental illness that is severe enough that it impacts their ability to function in school or at home. I decided to adopt through the county. I knew he was a handful. He was born with fetal alcohol effects, and he had a lot of prenatal exposure to alcohol and drugs, and he has a lot of long-lasting behavioral issues because of that. I think there's a, a big stigma around mental illness because mental illness is one of the diseases that really impacts your behavior. Many times you will behave differently than other people around you. Whether you have a depression or schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, you know or people see that you behave differently. It was a mess. It was a mess. It was like a puzzle of 100 pieces with 48 of them gone. I always felt like I was a really great mom to my girls but I thought I was a total failure for my boy, and I didn't know what to do. I think also for parents, talking about I have a child with mental illness, it almost feels to them like it's a failure on their part. Could they have done something differently? Is it their fault that their child has a mental illness? And in truth, it's not their fault that their child has a mental illness. Just like it wouldn't be their fault if their child had scoliosis or some other childhood illness, chicken pox. Kids get illnesses, whether it's a brain illness or a physical illness. And we need to help parents, kids, and families learn how to meet those challenges, know how to love that child and celebrate that child for all of their milestones. It may not be the same milestones that other kids get, but there's joy in those children. And we need to help families and parents find that joy. I had had a sleepless night worrying about what to do and how to get, make things better. And it was right about that time that a therapist suggested that MHS could come in and work with us. I switched over to mental health systems. I met some really fantastic people. They said, this is what we need to do. This is what we recommend for you. People with mental illness often struggle alone and recover alone because of the shame and stigma. So we as a people, as a society, really need to embrace people with mental illness. I'm hopeful that through education and through getting the word out and some anti-stigma campaigns, that people will not have to struggle alone and recover alone, but they can have us there cheering them on, 
celebrating them, letting them know that we care about them, and we're so glad that they're on the other side. You know, I was able to see the bigger picture, see that there are a lot of things working. And because it was so strength-based, I got to see that Devin has a lot of remarkable qualities. Right now, I am and I have attained goals that I never thought that I ever could in the past. When one of our clients succeeds, it's the best feeling in the whole world. Seeing their look on their face, the pride that they have, that they have achieved something that they've been struggling with before, and to knowing that you've helped another human being improve their life and achieve their dreams, it's a fantastic feeling. People can help us improve lives by donating. Donating money, donating time, volunteering, working on a special project. There are things everybody can do. And remember the quote by Edward Hale, you can't do everything, but you can do something. And the time to do something is now.